What is going on everybody? We're back to continue the uh, tutorial playthroughs and then uh, we'll, we'll figure out what next steps are um, after that. So right now we're going to jump into attack modifiers. Uh, we'll see how long this goes. I may not combine it with uh, number six. Uh, so let's just find out. This is going to be around the attack modifier. What I would, I've been referring to it as the attack modifier deck because I'm familiar with the uh, the board game version of this game, so it's it's a deck of cards. <laughs> uh, so the way this is going to work right now is um, I skip through all of the text. It's just kind of what I'm doing, so I can just better explain uh, from a user's perspective what we're doing. It wants us to stand next to one archer and kill the other. Okay, so that's just the challenge we're faced at the moment, and it'll talk a little bit more about why in a second. So for us to pull that off. Uh, we need to be next to this one, which is three spaces away. So we're, we're going to be looking to um, take either one of these two cards. Uh, one of these two cards. We're not, we don't need to loot. Uh, we don't really need to attack that one either. This is our ranged attack. Okay, so we're going to pick this one because it's the lowest initiative, so it gives us the best chance to go first. And then the, the other card we want after that, uh, we're going to save our move for for now and we're just going to choose the um, the move three and just kind of see how this goes all right so here's what we know uh, their six their initiative is 68 which means that we get to go first they're potentially going to hit us for three damage at range four we've only got one health point right now so any attack against us uh, will kill us uh, at least as is so let us move right next to this guy and our range attack will be a range three which is one two three yeah we'll be able to reach him so we'll, we'll go ahead and move here uh, i don't think we need the boots just yet i think we're fine so we will confirm movement i always forget which is the which is the press and which is the hold and now we're going to go ahead and attack and we want to kill this one. So notice how it says we need to kill the other. Both of these, um, I always forget, what does that icon mean? What is that swords one? Oh, um, I believe it, it's indicating that it will be at disadvantage. We'll talk about that later. Okay, so both of these guys have four health. We're doing potentially three. We're going to target this one and our card over there will also give us one experience point that's what that uh that gold icon number one means and let's finish confirming and see what happens all right it was subtle but just before we did the attack we saw a plus one appear and it boosted our attack to four points and it killed it why did it do that? Uh, let me talk about that. Okay, we'll talk about a couple things. Alright, uh, how do I see what our... How do I see what they are? Does it show us? Hmm, it doesn't show us. Oh, man, that's unfortunate. Okay, let's go back to the log here and uh, see what we can do. Ah, oh, this is frustrating. <laughs> I'm pressing triangle and trying to navigate these menus, but this is not going to work. Okay. If I... Oh, here we go. <clears throat> this is what I was looking for. Let me get rid of this. Okay. So, um, the attack modifiers ranges all the way from the left side, that purple circle with a line through it means null, no damage. That does not mean miss. Uh, just want to clarify that. Does not mean miss, just means no damage. There's minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, plus two, and then times two, which is double the damage. Okay? That's the range of attack modifiers that are available, and the dots beneath the number show us the cards that are inside of that deck that get randomly drawn every time we do an attack. Now, for these tutorials, our attack modifier deck is only three cards, which is why there's uh, those three circles. They're all plus ones, and one is grayed out because we just drew one of those cards. So we've got two more left in our deck, and they're maybe plus ones. Did these modify the 
potential damage of whatever card that we choose. Normally, when you get into a game, uh, the spectrum and the number of cards inside of that deck are, are going to be touching pretty much all of those options. But for the tutorial, they're only going to give us plus one. So that's why we killed that character, uh, even though our card had a, was only going to do three damage. Uh, this one over here, you can see that they have a wider range of attack modifiers in their deck. They have a null and they have a times two with a couple of zeros and a one. Okay. Uh, in that last round, they were, uh, it was really subtle. You can go back in the video and you can check it out. But there was a, a flashing purple symbol with two swords in it that was hovering underneath the health point bar for the archer. That indicates that, um, that, that the archer is at disadvantage. And the reason it's at disadvantage is because uh, whenever you perform a ranged attack, you want to be at least two spaces away. If you're within one space, which is melee range, then your attack is less efficient and therefore you're at disadvantage. It's a natural disadvantage. When you're disadvantaged, instead of drawing one attack modifier card, you draw two and you take the worst. So in this case, uh, as, as if you're looking at the log at the bottom, they drew the times zero and the times two. And they and so because they're at disadvantage, they had to take the, the worst one. And so their base damage of three times zero equals zero. So they did zero damage to us. Okay. The, the, the two arrow looks like a recycling symbol in some ways. Uh, that's next to the zero and the times two there. Those icons resemble that once they're drawn, you immediately reshuffle the entire attack modifier deck or pool. So whatever was used now comes back into the, the whole deck. So that's why even though they just played and looked at two cards, all of those circles underneath their modifier uh, ranges are all lit up because they shuffled everything back into that deck and now they're, they're available for them to draw. So that's a long explanation as to what the heck just happened. So now we're going to continue to just sort of play the rest of this scenario. And it needs us, we have to do two things. We have to chest, uh, we have to loot that chest and kill this archer. And if you've watched the previous video where I talked about resting, um, I'm not going to go into major detail here, but we definitely want to keep this card because the loot one enables us to loot, uh, to loot spaces without standing directly on it. We would be able to loot all of the, tiles or all of the hexes uh, that are one space adjacent to us in a, in, a, in a circle. So if we can get just into this space or this space and we use that, we would be able to loot this space. Let's imagine we were here. We would loot all the things in these uh, five spaces. That's why it's a pretty powerful card. So we definitely feel like we're going to need that card uh, unless we can actually land on that, which I don't think we can. Um, so the other thing that we need to do is be able to attack. And uh, so if I look at the options that we have here, um, I think the first thing we need to do, well, let's see. So this is a loot one and a move four. Both of those allow us to get onto the uh, chest because even if we don't use the loot one, we are still one, two, three, four spaces away. So what we really need to do is just kill this archer. And the only card that will really let us do that is either this one, which is going, which is actually a pretty good card because it lets us hit two targets adjacent to us uh, for three damage. So we could keep this card, or we could even keep this card because it's a ranged attack on the top portion of it, and we would be able to hit the archer um, from the loot space even if we wanted to move first. Which is, uh, well, how many spaces did I say that was? One, two, three. Actually, no, it's not. So. Uh, this card would be better for us to have, uh, but this there, there are benefits to both cards. Uh, this card, we would want to, if we did the attack on it, we would have to take a disadvantage roll, which is not a big deal for us because both of the cards in our pool are plus ones, so we know that we'll kill. The advantage of keeping this card is it's also a lower number in the initiative track, which gives us a great chance of going first. So I'm going to do a short rest. And if Spare Dagger appears as the card that would be randomly disc uh, burned, we're going to take damage and uh, keep and keep that card. So let's see what the game does.
I feel like it would be a great tutorial if it did it, but it did not. Okay, well, it is what it is. We've already decided that we would prefer to keep spare dagger, and randomly it was uh, it's it chose us to have to get rid of leaping cleave, which is great. We'll we'll get rid of it, and now we'll take our turn um, selecting spare dagger first, so that we because again, the, whatever card you pick first sets your initiative. So if I pick grab and go first, my initiative is 87. I don't want that right now. So 27 and then 87. We'll end our selection. Uh, they're going after us because their card is a 31. We'll continue. And so now we need to take our turn. So we, the way we want to do this is there's a couple of ways approaching this. Um, well, actually, uh, yeah, there's a couple of ways of approach of doing this. So we could actually... Okay, so we can't actually do this first because there are basic actions tied to every card. So every time you play a card, you have the option of using the section of the card as it's written, or you can take the basic action, which is um, if you look if you on this card, if you see the 27, directly to the right of it, there's the, the boot icon with the two, and to the left of it, there's a sword icon with the two. So if you choose to like you have to take the bottom section of a card but you really don't want it and you just want the basic movement you can do that as well so for us even if we wanted to uh, attack with this card we would not be able to use the top section of this card as basic movement right because we, we would prefer not to do this one right now because we would be rolling at disadvantage and have to take the worst of two cards because it's a ranged attack and we're at melee distance if we chose this one, which would be a better preferred attack, uh, the problem with it right now is it's only attack two, and our, and our modifier card is a plus one, so we would not kill the archer. So we know that this is the card that we need to use, and it would be it would be best if we had a range four, but we don't have range four. Um, so we're gonna just we're gonna just use the information that we know. We're gonna attack this guy, and we're gonna kill it because again we know that our only card we can draw is a plus one. So, so we drew both of the plus ones. We took the lesser of the of the of either one, and we were able to kill it. Now we have move four, which allows us to land right there, and we take it no problem. Is that the end of the scenario? I I would hope not. That was pretty easy. Okay, it's not great. So. At least I hope it's not. So we, we got this item, which is called a heater shield. And it says that when we get damaged, we're allowed to try to block one point of that damage. Um, and we can refresh this when we long rest. So we'll take that. And what happens next? Oh, that is the tutorial. Okay. I was surprised by that. I thought for sure we would get something a bit more challenging uh, to demonstrate more of the attack modifier potential but uh, before I go back to the main menu I just want to clarify that this mission could be pretty tricky to, to do everything that I just did in this scenario because of the analysis that went into it that the game doesn't really teach you to think about so you hopefully this information is helpful for you uh, but because of time I think I think I will end the video at just this one and we'll do another video separate for this one um, because I think this will really put things to the test, given the giving the description that I'm getting. So, you know, check if if I went really fast. It's just because I'm trying to preserve time in the video. Uh, but go back and listen to it again to really help make sense about what the, the attack modifiers do. Because this is going to be uh, a factor in every decision that you're going to make as you play the game. So, with that, uh, you know, I'll bid you good luck and and uh, yeah, hopefully check you out in the next video. Thanks.